Antarctica, the white continent, is the southernmost landmass on planet Earth and covers the South Pole. Antarctica was not discovered before 1820, only 200 years ago, and the South Pole was not reached before 1914, only a little more than 100 years ago. Antarctica has since its discovery captured the imagination of explorers, adventure seekers and scientists, and is still one of the farthest places you can travel on the planet. In this video, I'll share my experience with traveling in the Antarctic Peninsula and show and discuss the landscape and wildlife photography I captured along the way. All right, so we are right now out on a hike and we have come up on top of this fantastic hill. You can see here in the background, we have this super cool landscape with icebergs and mountains. A few low hanging clouds also helps to create some atmosphere. We have just had one of our expedition guides down here in the background posing for us so we can get a little bit of scale into this vast, vast landscape. Settings wise, F13, F11 is something like that. And then one shot for the background, one shot for the foreground. So I can focus tag it when I come back in Photoshop. Besides the wide angle shot, we've also had plenty of opportunities to use the long lens. So we're shooting out over this iceberg graveyard. So these icebergs may stay there for several seasons, which is rather cool to think about because they melt quite slowly and simply just using the long lens when the light pops out and just shoot, shoot, shoot. This place is phenomenal. Because Antarctica is a highly regulated area, the freedom and often broad ability to roam around that landscape photographers enjoy is very restricted. To regulate tourism and not stress the wildlife, ships and especially larger ships need to book landings often weeks and in some circumstances months ahead of visiting. And because of that you simply have to deal with the weather that you get. However, for wildlife photography, which Antarctica offers in droves, it's not a big deal. Booth Island also contains a penguin colony, and although I focused on landscape photography on this location, it's hard not to enjoy and photograph the cute penguins. So a big part of this cruise round in Antarctica is to photograph from the boat. There are different levels on the boat and that helps a little bit on the perspective. But generally it is simply just about waiting for an iceberg to float by. Sometimes there's a lone penguin on them, sometimes there's a smaller group. There's whales in the ocean where we try to like capture the blow when they come up and breathe and generally just try to line up foreground icebergs with the background mountains. We've been photographing in both the golden hour and the blue hour. The blue hour a little bit more tricky. You need to really up the ISO, lower down the aperture, which is no problem because the elements in the scene are quite far away. But in that way we can get these beautiful mountain ranges with reflected light or directed light on them. Generally it's just so beautiful down here. Compositionally, as I mentioned, it is very much about lining up icebergs, trying to create a sense of depth, which can be a little bit hard when you're photographing with the long lens. 
and that is why you want some icebergs, something interesting in the foreground, maybe something in the midground, and then the mountains in the background. Shooting straight on, also beautiful and simple, but having that depth just adds a little bit more interest to the photo. If you want to learn more about composition in landscape photography, such as depth, separation, making sure that your subjects are standing out on the background, visual flow and so forth, be sure to get my two ebooks on composition in landscape photography. They're super easy to read, they have so many examples, and there are links to both of them down in the description of this video. One of the hardest parts of photographing in Antarctica I found as a landscape photographer was to show the immense scale of the landscape. In the photos I showed from the first location in this video I could use one of the guides, but at sea it became much harder. Luckily, when a sailboat came by it helped showing the scale and I captured a couple of my favorite photos from the trip. So I'm currently just here in my cabin and I'm shooting out over this super calm water and we have this mountain here in the background that kind of looks like an American football or a lemon. So you can see right now the clouds are really nice. We have some sun up here that actually lights up the foreground and with the wide angle lens I can really go in and take some quite fascinating photos and here comes an iceberg. That looks really cool. Right now I'm actually also using the polarizing filter because one would think that the polarizing filter would remove I just have to focus here <laughs> would remove the reflection of the mountain but it's actually still there and then it helps to cut through the glare on the water so I can actually see the underside of as an example, this iceberg right here in front. So right now, because there is so much light, it's ISO 100, F63, I'm shooting here from the cabin in the ship, so everything is far away, and F63 on this lens, the 16-35mm F4 PZ lens from Sony, is actually quite sharp, and then it gives me whatever fast shutter speed I get. We are heading out on the Zodiacs in just half an hour in this beautiful, beautiful calm water and hopefully we'll get some really, really cool photos. Paradise Harbour and Scontop Cove delivered one of the most beautiful Zodiac explorations of the entire trip. We generally had beautiful calm water and both the historical sites and the wildlife was plentiful. Penguins swimming around, jumping out of the water different kinds of seals chilling on the ice, and humpback whales breaching the surface of the water. Not to mention the ice floating around we could use to create some wide-angle photos. The upside to being in the zodiacs means you can get closer to all the wildlife and increase your luck of a good photo. On top of that it also means that the photographers in the different zodiacs will get different photos. The downside is, of course still, that it is very luck dependent whether you get a good photo or not as with all wildlife photography and you can easily get the feeling of missing out on what the other zodiacs got 
But then again, you'll definitely also get something the other Zodiacs did not. And I probably got my favorite whale photo of the entire trip. I gotta admit I don't find leopard seals to be particularly cute. My favorite were definitely the Antarctic fur seals. My zodiac didn't catch any on this outing, but we got one on another which also was a calm, beautiful morning cruising in a fjord where a glacier filled the water with ice. I did get several other photos this morning and here are a few of them. I'll just jump in here to remind you that the spring sale where you can get entire $100 off my big post-processing course is now running. It is in this course where I share all my editing techniques through Camera Raw and Photoshop. If you already use Lightroom, you can just keep using that as many of the techniques I show start in the raw module and from there continue to Photoshop. In this more than 30 videos course, I teach you about the programs, how to use them, blending, luminosity masking, dodging and burning, cleaning your photos properly, how to add and control atmosphere and glow, and much, much more. There is a link with a coupon code to get $100 off down in the description of the video. If you see this video after the expiring of the spring sale, there will be another discount code. Besides myself, the guides on this trip were Nigel Danson, James Popsis, Jerome van Nievenhoff, Adam Gibbs, Rick Bebbington, Rachel Bixby, and Danny Connor. Alan Wallace was supposed to join us, but due to a back operation, he had to cancel. So here's a shout out to you, Alan. Hope you're doing well. If we weren't cruising zodiacs, making landings or eating, there were many presentations, either from us photographers or the Aurora Expedition guides, who all had so many interesting presentations related to Antarctica. Ah, so we are on our way up a mountain on a very small hike, but nevertheless really nice to finally get some elevation where we can shoot from a point and supposedly we have this big ridge in front of us that we can hopefully use in the first house. Like you know when you are sitting still as much as you are <laughs> on a cruise like this, you lose your breath quite fast when you're finally out doing something. Oh yeah, this will be nice. So we made it to the top of the hike and the ridge line is really, really nice so we can get this super cool S curve as you can see here behind me. There's really not a whole lot to it. We can handhold this one. I'm shooting at 16 millimeter, F13, just getting everything in focus. Now, one thing that's important is to make sure that to get some scale in this photo, to have one of the other people who are still walking up the little trail in the shot. And that really works so well to create that scale. All we just want now, 
is the sun to pop out and give us a little bit of light on this foreground. This photo turned out okay, I think. Not the best of the bunch. However, photographing the opposite way towards the penguin colony and the penguin highway it delivered for the rare occasion of a couple of black and white photos from my side. Generally photographing the penguins here was quite fun. I captured this of feeding time, both close up and with some more context. And this one I quite enjoy as it looks like the grown up is telling off the child while the siblings are looking in from a distance. Throughout this trip we visited several other places in both the Antarctic Peninsula and South Shetland Islands for even more landscape and wildlife photography. It's no secret that Antarctica is a hard place to photograph for landscape photographers due to all the regulations. There is no such thing as free roaming unless you are a very experienced Antarctic traveler. And obviously none of us are. And although it may be hard for landscape photographers where you need to be super fast capturing that ice passing by the zodiac and try to get the zodiac driver back into the right position again and then the ice has moved into another position for wildlife photographers antarctica is a feast my general strategy was to get the landscapes i could but obviously also photograph the wildlife everyone's a landscape photographer until they see a humpback whale breach the surface two meters in front of them I think most of my favorite photos from this trip is either where I managed to show the scale of the huge landscapes or somehow made sure to show the wildlife in the context of the landscapes. However, all this said, the biggest part of visiting Antarctica is that it's Antarctica. It's a massive privilege being able to set foot on the white continent in such a remote part of the world, something that only a small fraction of humans are able to do. The views from the ship are incredible and cruising among all the ice, penguins and whales humbles you as a human being. For the last part of our journey we returned to the South Shetland Islands to fly back to Chile, but due to low visibility conditions for several days the planes couldn't land so we had to pass the Drake Passage with the ship and even though we had relatively mild conditions, seasickness is definitely still a thing. We disembarked and said goodbye to Sylvia Earl in the southernmost town on Earth, Puerto Williams, and flew from there back to Punta Arenas. But the adventure didn't stop there, as a group of us headed to Torres del Pine National Park, which I wanted to visit for years and got some of the most epic landscape photos possible. But that you'll see in next week's video. And it is kicking off. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Just look at this. So just to round off this video, Nigel, James and I are looking into the possibility of making an Antarctic trip in 2026, but it is only if there is a big enough interest for it. If you're interested in going, there is a link to a non-binding sign-up sheet in the description of the video. Remember, you have to show interest for us to know whether we should spend two years preparing another visit to Antarctica. Besides that, check out all the other links to my educational material down in the description of the video and be sure to benefit from the spring sale.